Pilar Pelé was a strong woman, but the Hollywood environment broke her. The actress never truly adapted to America when she left Peru, and it almost destroyed her. How was Pilar Pelé annihilated by John Wayne? Not everyone will find love. It's sad, but it's the truth. No one truly understands how the world works or how love itself works. However, no one accepts that they wouldn't find love, and people constantly try for it despite getting burnt multiple times. The Duke certainly is such a man. He was, after all, the marrying kind. He married three times, and perhaps would have tried for a fourth, if he didn't have health problems that robbed him of his life. His marriages were doomed, even the one with Pilar Palais, which was his longest marriage. Longevity doesn't always equate to peace and happiness. Honestly, that they ever reached around 19 years of marriage was a miracle. The signs of failure were written in the Duke's past. Maybe if Pelé had known of her husband's past marriages before falling for him, she would have rejected his advances. The Duke married Josephine Alicia Sands, the daughter of a Panamanian businessman and a devout Catholic and it is precisely her devotion that Duke didn't know how to handle. Josephine was her husband's opposite. The woman bore the Duke four children, but she saw sex as a means to have children and nothing more. But Duke? He saw intimacy differently. He needed its pleasure and delight. After having four children, his wife allegedly decided to close up shop. As a Catholic woman, she believed that contraceptives were sinful, and since she didn't want any more children, she didn't need to make love to her husband. Duke wasn't comfortable with this proposition, but initially didn't want to end his marriage, so he had fun with actresses, but felt his guilt, and broke these relationships off to be with Josephine. However, everything changed when Marlena Dietrich came into the picture. As Marlena laid her eyes on John, she wanted him, and immediately began to scheme to have him. The sexy German actress invited the man to her room, and she had the confident John Wayne feeling nervous. After spending some time with the actress, John asked for the time, commenting he was late, and Marlena told him the time in the most unusual way possible. She pulled up her skirt, displaying her delicious gartered legs and thighs to the actor, and from there a tempestuous relationship began and lasted three years, according to reports. The actress swung on both sides of the fence, bedding men and women. According to reports, the FBI looked into the German actress due to her nationality. Allegedly, they found just Marlena leaving a trail of men she'd slept with. She had an affair with Jean Gabin, the French actor who was in La Grande Illusion. They also discovered that the actress had something going on with Eric Remarque, the author of All Quiet on the Western Front and they found out that she and Kay Francis, one of the highest-paid actresses of her time, had something going on too. But despite all her affairs, Marlena had a special thing with John. Well, if you can call him and her having one of their moments on the stairs of a hotel staircase, it was also one of Wayne's best moments with her. The spontaneity of the situation, the rawness of it. The actor didn't even talk about the incident until he was badgered by friends and had gone through more than a few bottles of drink. Josephine knew what her husband was up to, but there was little she could do to stop him. She stomached it until the point where her husband went to Mexico. Now that was when things began to go horribly wrong between her and Duke. The masculine actor met Esperanza Bauer Diaz Cabales, or Chata, as she loved people to call her through Ray Milland, who introduced them. John was under the impression that she was a part-time actress. Oh, she acted all right, but her performances were on a fluffier kind of stage. Chatter was a cool girl, and Ray was one of the men that called for her a hefty sum, of course. However, when John discovered the true nature of Chatter's line of work, she allegedly spun a sob tale for him, one which a gentleman such as Duke bought hook, line, and sinker. Chatter claimed she wanted to leave her old life behind and marry a man she had fallen in love with. Like that... Duke took Chatter with him back to America. She responded to his desires with gusto. Chatter also loved to drink and could keep up with the Duke. She was what you would call fun. While Josephine preferred the company of priests and fellow socialites to Duke's hard-partying Hollywood friend, 
chatter seemed to fit in with them. Josephine couldn't ignore this, but she wouldn't divorce her husband as it was against her belief. So Josephine did what she thought was best. She reported her husband to her priest for the priest to preach to him. The talk didn't yield results. John wanted a divorce, and he was insistent on this. To Josephine this must have felt absurd, because she didn't place intimacy on the pedestal that her husband put it. After his long and hard insistence, Josephine decided to grant her husband a divorce, but it hurt her. She clarified that she was doing this as just a civil action, and still considered herself married to John. It didn't matter to John, he finally could marry his chatter, even if it meant that he would forfeit his relationship with John Ford, his pal, and the director he usually worked with. Ford didn't want the actor to marry Chatter, and didn't talk to him for two years because of this. John had fun with Chatter. They drank and slept with each other with reckless abandon. However, the actor would soon discover that a wife was much more than someone you would have the fun times with. Chatter wasn't a home-builder. She and Wayne fought one time. The woman would complain that he cared more about his movie-making business than he did about her. Frankly, Wayne was all about his business. Apart from pleasure and being a father, it was what gave him purpose, and he was great at it. The man didn't even go to World War II because he wanted to make films. However, this would be an action he regretted, but maybe not too much because he capitalised on the absence of other prominent actors to achieve top billing at the box office. Sometimes his fights with Chatter became violent. She left him a gash on his cheek. However, Duke tried to make the marriage work, but it was doomed. For seven years they remained married, and during this period they separated many times and got back together many times. It was an unhealthy pattern that always got Duke. His second wife would do something wrong, then she would apologise for it. Believing he would see changes, Wayne would accept the apology only for her to fall back into her old patterns. It certainly didn't help that her mother was around and it looked like she encouraged her daughter's excesses. Well, it's not surprising. Allegedly, Chatter's mother housed call cool girls back in Mexico and may have been her daughter's manager when she was a call cool girl. The drama was one Wayne believed he would only encounter under a director's guidance. At this point, Wayne said enough and booted Chatter's mother out of his house. However, eventually the two would divorce, and it was a messy one. Chatter believed that her husband was cheating on her. When John came home one time after dropping off Gail Russell, Chatter and her mother, who had joined her, were talking loudly about her and him. Rather than open the door for him to enter when he was knocking, they continued talking. So Wayne broke one of the glass panels by the door so he could enter. Immediately he entered, a bullet missed his head by inches. Chatter told the court that she thought Wayne was a burglar. Wayne revealed she knew it was him, and she and her mother struggled for the gun. Then Chatter accused John of not being a loyal husband, and that he had a relationship with Gail Russell. The Duke denied this, revealing he and Gail were just co-workers, and he never for once had an affair with her. This proceeding would ruin Gail's already fragile mind as it brought media attention to her, and she had spent her career avoiding that. That messy divorce led to fragile Gail taking her own life, as the only way she knew to steal her nerves was to drink, and she drank more than a fish in water did. Wayne also shot back at Chatter, revealing that she was having an affair with Nicky Hilton, one of Elizabeth Taylor's former husbands and heir to Hilton Hotels. Wayne revealed that he saw the Hilton Hotel pin in the room he shared with his wife, and a drawing of his wife writing her name as Mrs. Hilton. Then Chatter shot back that the brawny actor used his large, beefy hands against her, an accusation which the actor rejected. He claimed he only tried as much as he could for Chatter to compose herself when she and her mother had drunk into a stupor. The battle was messy and bloody, and it was on the backdrop of this battle that he travelled to Peru. His intentions during his travel there were to search for locations that would be great for his film, The Alamo. There he saw a woman that struck his head and heart. This woman was filming a scene as a gypsy, and was giving one of the most exotic dances he had ever seen. The woman's long dark hair danced alongside her, and her thin legs supported her movements gracefully. 
The duke was charmed. The woman he saw was Pilar Palais, and at that moment she helped him forget the troubles he faced back home. However, his troubles would lead to his not-so-happily-ever-after marriage with Pilar. Maria del Pilar Palais Alvarado was born on 3rd of September 1928 in Peter Peru. Pilar Palais comes from the aristocracy, being the daughter of a Peruvian senator. Her mother was a strict, devout Catholic woman who believed her daughter would marry into an aristocratic family and tried to keep her in line by threatening her with hell. Pilar's mother was much more concerned about her listening to her than any other thing, but Pilar's mother pushed too much. While her daughter may look fragile, she had an impossible strength and toughness. Palais refused her mum's guidance. Marry an aristocrat? No, mother. Pilar chose to marry Richard Weldy, a man opposite of her mother's idea of an ideal husband. Also, Pilar added more to her disobedient mix. She chose to become an actress. Her marriage to Weldy was a complete disaster. The man was a chronic cheat, and he did it enough that his young wife left him. Then John Wayne brought his American charm to Peru. The Duke was undergoing an ugly divorce. He needed a breather and wanted to find locations for the Alamo. Now Wayne was told he needed to find a Richard Weldy to get fantastic locations. Richard was working for Pan American Airways and also led tours into Amazonian waters as a side work. It was Richard that led Wayne to Tingo Maria, a small jungle town in Peru. But it wasn't the jungles of Peru that got his attention. It was a young, athletic woman, Richard's ex-wife, and Wayne's future wife. The feeling was mutual. As Pelé saw Wayne's sturdy frame, she also became weak in the knees. They charmed each other the night they met. But Richard wasn't amused. Suddenly he had seen the error of his ways and tried to stage a weak comeback into her life. He went to her and told her he needed her in his life. No, that was all Pilar said. OK, not all. She also asked him if he had begun the divorce process, to which he replied and said, No. Palais didn't care. Wayne had charmed her enough without saying so much. Then he said more than a word, and you know how that went. Pilar and Duke met after and ate dinner together with the rest of the cast and crew. Duke began to talk, and Palais found him engaging. His experience with Latin women gave him an advantage as he wowed Palais with knowledge of the customs of the Latin people. Pilar's English wasn't good, but she communicated, and Duke wasn't judgmental. She played the guitar that night, leaving Duke impressed with her skills. Dinner ended, and the two parted ways. I guess this is goodbye, the Duke said as he placed his large hands, which swallowed Palais in a gentle touch. It wasn't goodbye, it was the first part of their meeting. The second part was where the doom began. But when Duke bought a new guitar for Pilar to show appreciation for her guitar skills, she could not have foreseen any great harm coming. After a few months from their first meeting, Pilar had to travel to Hollywood to Warner Brothers Studios. She was meant to dub some dialogue for a film she starred in. The day ended, and when she sought to leave the stage through the stage door, it opened from the other side, and the sight was one she needed. Weary, nervous, and exhausted, Pilar found immediate comfort in the hulking figure of Wayne. The passion was swift and ruinous. Pilar became pregnant. It wasn't good news. Wayne's PR struggled with the negative press from his ongoing divorce from Chatter. If news got out that he had another child coming along without being officially divorced from Chatter, the scandal could ruin Wayne's image. For Pilar, too, it wasn't good news. She didn't want to do anything that would hurt Wayne. However, Wayne left it to her and promised to follow her decision. Pilar was at a crossroads. She could decide to have the baby, but it meant that John's career would suffer and he would lose standing in his divorce proceedings and the settlement process. Or the actress could follow her faith as a Catholic and not have an abortion. Pilar made her choice. She chose Wayne, and it destroyed her. The decision would eat up her mental health for years. Wayne got divorced from Chatter, and the settlement was expensive. He could now marry Pilar, and he said it was the best thing to happen to him. However, his wife would find out that her husband wasn't quite the stoic man the movies said he was. 
The Duke was capable of intense rage, and Pilar's first experience was when Marlon Brando expressed his desire for her. It vexed the actor so much. But Wayne tried to be a good husband. His work had him going away for long periods. He didn't know that his wife, who was tough enough to chase Robert Mitchum from their house, was not unbreakable. She struggled to fit into Wayne's world of loud parties and crazy drinking. It became a problem for her that she couldn't sleep. So she went to the doctor and got pills for sleeping, which she took every day. But she didn't think she was addicted until her husband decided to take her along with him to work. It was time to sleep, and Pelé couldn't find her sleeping pills. She lost her mind and began to hallucinate. The actress was like a woman possessed and got blades to slash her wrist. Even then the Duke couldn't be with her. Work called him away. Pelé was flown to get the best medical care and was forever grateful for the treatment. However, despite it all, new reports say that the Duke cheated on his wife with Maureen O'Hara. According to these reports, the two met at his Arizona ranch and they had started the affair before Wayne got married to Pilar and continued it afterward. Maureen was one of the few people that could ride on Wayne's yacht, but she would deny having a relationship with the man. So would he. He even swore to his daughter with Pilar, Asa, that he ruined his first marriage by cheating and wasn't cheating on her mother. Eventually, Pilar moved out of the Duke's house. The two never got a divorce until he died of cancer. But wait, there's more! In our next video, we will take you behind the scenes of one of cinema's most mysterious love stories, Sandra Milo's secret relationship with the legendary Federico Fellini. Click now!